My name is Steve. Welcome to my shop. This video is going to be just a short how-to video and basically a product test. Back when I made my aluminum palette, I don't expect anybody to remember it, but I never forgot it. I broke a tap off when I was tapping this. And it's a 6 millimeter by 1.0 thread. And every time I've taken this palette out to use it, that thing was staring me in the face. So I decided I had to do something about it. Some time ago, I purchased a carbide drill called an Omega Drill. And I got it from McMaster Car. But it is specifically designed to drill out taps. So I'm going to give it a try and see how it works. And I've got that relatively flat using a diamond burr and uh, this drill that I purchased it's called an, um, an Omega drill and it's designed for drilling out broken taps it's got a triangular shape to it and in the instructions they recommend that you try and get the tap as flat as possible because of course they they don't break off nice and neat so now I'm going to take it over and mount it up in the drill press and see what we can do with it the instructions recommend that you turn this drill between 1200 and 2500 RPM so I decided to bring it over to my little drill press which I can run I've got it set up at about 1500 RPM right now which is a lot faster than I can get the mill up that fast, but it takes a lot of pulley changes to do it. So I'm going to try it on the drill press. It's got a little bit more sensitivity. I should be able to feel it a little bit better. And I say the speed is much better. So let's give it a try. recommends going very light peck drilling Okay, I thought I knocked the tip of it off already. It's fine. It's, uh, they recommend that you can use a little bit of uh, cutting oil on it, but not cool it. Give it a
it's drilling but it's going a little bit off center I think I'm going to take it back over and hit it with the diamond burr to try and pull it back on center again I'll stop back when I've, I've got it straightened out the problem is that the tap actually broke and shattered inside of this and so I've, I've got some interrupted cuts I used the diamond burr and flattened it out pretty good so essentially I'm starting over with my drill Let's see if we can go a little bit further with it I might have to go through this a few times clean the hole out and see how I'm doing. I got enough of the tap drilled out that I'm able to drive the, uh, the tap out, what's left of it. Whereas it's just aluminum and it's stripping the threads out. It's almost out. You can see right here the tip of the tap has come through. So that has moved probably close to a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and finish driving it out. Well, I was able to get it all out. Here are the remaining pieces. But I was I tried this before the drill and and with the drill I was able to get almost half of the tap out. So it it gave me the option of being able to to drive the rest of this out without ruining the the carbide drill. So there it is. I'm going to finish cleaning up the hole then I'm going to see if I've got the correct size helicoil to helicoil it. Here is the drill. You can see the tip the way it's ground and I did not damage it. It might need a little touch up to sh sharpen it, the edges might be a little knocked off, but I did not break it or damage it. So that's a good thing. The Omega drill. Well, I went to my helicoil drawer and I didn't have a six millimeter helicoil. So I went in to order it and I looked it up on one of my normal industrial suppliers and the price was out of this world so I checked it on eBay and I got a branded helicoil set six millimeter by one uh, badged for Napa but it's still helicoil brand and it was half the price so I just got it in today and we're going to take and install the helicoil. Calls for a quarter inch drill. Before we go over the drill press, I just want to take a quick shot of my helicoil drawer. I'm going handheld here for just a few seconds. 
this is the drawer of all of the Gila coils that I've got both metric and fractional and of course I didn't have the one I needed now I do okay, the tap drill size for the six millimeter Gila coil is quarter inch I'm going to drill drill my quarter inch hole Back to the workbench. Okay, the helicoil tap, of course, is oversized. And it's the same thread count. Of course, it's the 1.0 thread count. Using a little bit of CRC 556 on here to keep the chips from welding on the, the tap I drilled the holes in this from the rear with clearance drills so I've only got about three-eighths of an inch of thread and uh, each hole and needless to say the the helicoil is only going to be about three-eighths of an inch deep also I've got one additional spot here that I'm going to put one in when I was drilling my clearance drill holes I got a little carried away and I ended up drilling right through the face on one of them so I'm going to install a helo coil in that one also okay, I'm going to take the pallet over and blow it out I don't have air at the bench here be right back before I install the helo coils I'm just going to put a little bit of a bevel on it, just deburr it. My Noga tool. Okay. Here's the coil and the installing tool. So it's got a little tab on the bottom of it and the installing tool actually threads right into it and you start the threads and through the installing tool until it just starts to come out put a little, a little tap wrench on it Line that up with the hole. And you can feel it start to go in. It actually springs back if you see. It's like a little spring that you're putting in there. And as soon as it clears the top. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to back that out of there for a second. I'll pull the installing tool out. And I'm going to thread this down just a thread or two below the surface so that I can resurface the plate without hitting the coil. So that's in there. Let's do the other one.
couple of threads below the surface. Now there's still a tang in there. A little drive tang is still on the bottom. So I'm going to break that out now. A lot of people will use a punch to break it out. I like to use a pair of fine needle nose pliers and I can grab it and snap it right out of there. There's the tang. Let's see if I can see that. There's the little piece off the bottom. That's the drive tang. Pull the other one out. And there's the other one. And we're ready to go. Let's try the screw. Here's my six millimeter bolt, and that threads in nicely. So it's done. That's going to wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you like this kind of content, just let me know. Give me a comment. I've got plenty more shop skills that I can share with you. I enjoy doing this little project. I've got my pallet back up to 100% now. I think the next thing I do, I'm going to uh, just face it off because I've done a couple of jobs and the surface of this is meant to be sacrificial. And I got a few machine marks in it, so I'm thinking I might just do a resurface on it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.